Okay, so the next project on my 1992 Dodge W250 is we're going to be doing a valve lash clearance adjustment. And this is called for in the owner's manual every right there 24,000 miles or 38.6 thousand kilometers. And since I've had this truck for a year now, and probably only put about 10,000 kilometers on it. I don't know when the last one's been done. So we're just going to do one anyways. <clears throat> just so we know where it's at. So we're going to have to pull this cover plate off, all six valve covers, and a couple special tools required for this job. There's a set of feeler gauges, um, specifically 0 0.01 inch and 0 0.02 inch is the clearances that we're going to be doing. And then an engine barring tool. This is so we can stick this in from the front side of the bell housing and then turn the engine over by hand with a ratchet. And that's the only specialty tools you're going to need. So let's get to it. Alright, so we've pulled all six valve covers off. Be careful not to wreck the seals underneath the valve covers when you take them off. You can use a rubber mallet just to tap the edges and break it loose and make sure you don't get any dirt or gunk in underneath the valve covers when you're taking them off. The thing we're going to want to do is come in from the front side of the engine and go to the front side of the bell housing and remove that black rubber plug and then we can get in there with the firing tool and rotate the engine to so the number one piston is on the compression stroke at top dead center. I'm coming in from the bottom side and I'm using just this little pry screwdriver and what I did was get underneath of it and pry back and then that pops out. And then I'm pretty sure we can just pull that out. There we go. Just a plug. Okay, so next we take our barring tool and then we can just insert it up into that hole and rotate the engine to where we want it. I get a socket on the end of that and then we can rotate it. Okay, so we need to locate top dead center of the compression stroke for the number one cylinder. And according to my um, shop manual for 92 Dodge, the way to do that is use a timing pin located just below the injection pump. And what you do is you rotate the crankshaft, making sure it's on the compression stroke and then that pin will engage in a little hole inside the cam, I think. But once that pin's in there, then you know that you're at top dead center. So it says right here, you can read it all. Located at the back of the gear housing and below the injection pump. So I'll show you that on the truck in a second. Okay, so I'm just by the injection pump now. And this is below the injection pump and towards the block. You can see that little black knob at the back. That's your timing pin. So you're going to want to rotate the crankshaft slowly and then push in on that pin to locate that little pinhole and that, that, let, that tells you when you're at top dead center. And you have to make sure you're on the compression stroke. So at the same time You want to take a look at your valves. So here's just a diagram of that pin and how it works. This is the cross section on the side just below the injection pump and then that engages with the gear on the camshaft. So there's going to be a hole on the back of that gear and then the pin is going to slide right in. Okay so when rotating the engine over you want your partner to turn over the engine clockwise when looking at it from the front. 
So, my engine turning partner's down there. <laughs> you can see him. He's going to rotate the engine clockwise. And while looking at these two rockers, this is the intake and that's the exhaust rocker. You want the exhaust rocker to close. And then from there, we're going to rotate the crankshaft 90 more degrees clockwise while pushing in on that pin and then it should engage just around there and that will be top dead center for number one. So right now this exhaust valve is down and watch as he turns it and it's going to start going up. So go ahead. So that's at the top for the exhaust valve and now we want the crankshaft to rotate 90 more degrees. So we can keep an eye on the balancer to know the location of the crankshaft. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. A little bit more. Okay, stop. Okay, here's a big warning. This little timing pin has a little plastic piece on the end and when you rotate it and it engages and you keep on turning that little plastic pin, the little plastic nipple will break off and stay inside the camshaft, which is exactly what happened to us and I'm sure multiple people when they've tried to do this before. So luckily, we tried to get it out and I used a small pair of needle nose pliers and grabbed just the end of it that was sticking outside of the camshaft and then I could pull it out and didn't drop it fortunately. So and just as a tip, instead of doing it this way and pushing the pin in to line it up, you can just stick a camera in there, a phone like I did, like I did to line it up so we could get it out because now it's located in the center of that hole and I know it's at top dead center and we don't even have to use this pin. You just have to look in there and make sure it's lined up. So I'll show you that in a second. I'm just using my iPhone to go down in here. That's the hole for it. And then I can go in with the light on and then bam, right there. That's the center of the hole that that pin goes in. Let's see if I can get it to focus. That's it focused on the hole. So what I was doing to try and line it up to get it out was dad was down at the bottom with the barring tool rotating it until it was about the center and then that would be top dead center so now we can do our valve lash adjustment but that was pretty a uh, pretty close call for getting that thing stuck in there or stuck down in the bottom of the oil pan or whatever. Now that number one cylinder is at top dead center we can go ahead and adjust one through five cylinders and these specific intake and exhaust valves for now. And number one would be at the front of the engine, and number six is at the back. Okay, so we can do number one intake and exhaust at the same time. We're gonna break these nuts loose and then readjust the valves. What you need is a 14 millimeter wrench to break the nut loose, and then a flat bladed screwdriver to hold on to the adjustment screw at the top. All right, so on the intake, we just set it, it's at 0.01 inch. Break that nut loose, and then with a flat blade screwdriver, you tighten that adjustment screw just so there's just a little bit of drag on that 0.01 inch feeler gauge, and not to the point where you can't pull it out, but just so you can feel it in the feeler gauge and hear it just a tiny bit scraping. So that's good. Now we'll move on to exhaust. Now we can set one, three, and five valve lash, and we're just checking number one now with 0 0.02 inch and it before we even adjust it and it's pretty good now so we're just going to leave it. Now we'll check number three and, and five and see how they are. Okay, I'm uh, setting cylinder number five exhaust now, 0 0.02 inch. I'm just up in the hood here. So I think that's good. Great, so now we can go around and to all the valves that we adjusted, we can tighten the Lock nuts down to 18 foot pounds is what it calls for. So now that we have six valves adjusted, we can rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees and adjust the other six valves. 
So we'll mark, mark the crank, crankshaft pulley and rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees based on that mark and then we can adjust the last six valves. Now that the engine's been rotated 100, sorry, 360 degrees, we can do number two, four, and six cylinders exhaust. Next we can set number three, five, and six intake valve lashes. All right, so now I'm just gonna clean up these valve covers, make sure all the gaskets don't have cracks in them, and make sure they're all good. Um, all these bolts have little O-rings at the top of them. Make sure they're all in good shape and then reinstall everything, and then that's it for the valve lash adjustment. Great, so all the valve covers are back on, cleaned up that cover and reinstalled it, and make sure we put that plug back in just underneath the injection pump, and then we're good to go. That's it. Thanks for watching.